okay and we should be live now um so um we talked before and um i'm i'm going to call you chris uh sure. that's that's what we uh we agreed on uh chris can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and um um you can tell us what you do on twitter and why and then uh mm -hmm. please i'd like to know what do you believe and why do you believe it okay well uh, a little bit about myself um i i am a christian i've uh, been um uh, been a christian my whole life uh i was uh with people i'm uh, familiar with uh i tell them the story of how i was baptized catholic and I've been a Lutheran ever since. Um, and, uh, and yeah, w starting out um, early in life, I was Christian because that's what I believed. Um, but uh, through some um, epistemo uh, epistemological uh, stripping, I guess you could call it, um, I tried to get at the reason of how I would know that um, Jesus was Lord if uh, if I wasn't raised in the church. And what it comes down to is Jesus rose from the dead. Now, how I verify that, how I know that, how I, um, uh, how I learn to communicate that to others is uh, one of the things that uh, my channel is going to be about. So that's what I do on, um, on YouTube is I try to explain, um, uh, well, I will try to do is try to explain um, how I know that Jesus rose from the dead because that is the ultimate proof of the Christian faith. I think I, and, um, and what I do on Twitter is all about that. It's going to be all about um, getting to talk to people and uh, explain to them how I know that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, or if they don't believe it, then, uh, then I just challenge them with uh, with this question. I've challenged them with it many times, and a lot of people seem to be willing to engage with it. And that's the question: um, <clears throat> Jesus Christ died by crucifixion. His disciples claimed that he was alive three days later. What do you say happened? And what do I? Question and uh, the conversation goes from there. So that's what I try to do, and that's a little bit about uh, who I am. Okay, so so you were raised as a Christian. Yes. Okay, so very much so. And at at any point, um, have you uh, um, um, challenged what what you were taught? Yes. And can I can I ask how you did that? No, it was it was more of a private challenge to myself um but it, but it really was a um like I, I don't see the god person around me that everyone tells me about um i i don't see the evidence for his existence i um so it so i challenged myself i said okay if uh if god doesn't exist then how did i get here and um <clears throat> And I thought about what's supposed to be our closest relatives, the chimpanzee, and us. And I said, okay, is, is this close enough? Do, do I, we really look like these things that we supposedly come from, if the evolutionary um, atheists are correct? And, um, and I said, no, the, we're, we're too far apart. That's too much of a change for us to be um, descended from them. And um, now I was very young at the time. I didn't know exactly how right I was. Um, since then, I've heard of a lot of missing links uh, between uh, between us and the chimpanzee. And I've also heard a lot uh, about a lot of hoaxes. And um, uh, and so since then, um, every uh, missing link that's been proposed. Like, it's either A, like I said, a hoax, or B, 
very clearly human or C, very clearly not human, more like an ape. Um, so since there is that gap there, I can't get to evolution. And all of this is beside the point that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Okay. Um, what, what I would like to point out is, is um, at, at this moment, uh, there's no gap. And uh, there's, there's another thing I wanted to touch on, because um, it isn't that there should be a link between us and chimpanzees. Uh, we share a common ancestor. And the lineage for both us and the chimpanzees is, is as good as complete. And you, you, you're not, you're not aware that things advanced this far. Well, <clears throat> for example, didn't they just find that uh, skeleton in um, oh, what was it, uh, Greece? I think where <clears throat> it's supposed to be um, uh, another one of our uh, ancestors. I, th I think the latest uh, uh, one that was um, clearly uh, 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 an intermediary step was, was Homo, Homo Naledi, which was uh, found in, in Africa, in South Africa, in a cave okay. where we already found uh, other ancestors, other... Uh, hominid forms so um they they just um they just found some uh another one like within the last year and um it, it raised some big uh hull blue on youtube how um uh uh apes may not have originated in africa that this one is actually in um uh southern europe so you know, the, there's some challenging points about that that I personally uh, care about because when I look at that thing, I'm like, yeah, that's very clearly a human being. Uh, it may have some uh, features that don't look um, perfectly conformed to a human skeleton, but like I look at that thing and I say, that's a man. <clears throat> okay, but um, I'm... I'm not fully aware of uh, the one you're talking about now, but let's mm -hmm. let's uh, sure let's sure. just go ahead and and say uh, what you say is 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 all uh, completely accurate because it, I think it will take a little bit time before we know all the of the specifics, but that wouldn't do anything to the lineage we already have because that that lineage is is as good as complete if we would find another uh, human uh, species that uh, in in some way uh, evolved on another plane it would maybe, uh, if as, as far as I see it, uh, be another form of of, of hominid, uh, which we need to 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 see where it fits in the lineage we already have. But what we have is already complete. So. It, it, okay, it just would it just would be another another branch, um, and it could easily be a branch that uh, uh, has gone extinct over time. But that that'll take a lot of research before we know everything about it. Okay, so I'll have I have two points here. Um, I'll I'll try to find the words for a second one. The first one is, if I looked at the um, at the lineup, let's say, of all the different fossils uh, that we found of um, <clears throat> of what who we say are 
either prehistoric man or um, uh, or our evolutionary relatives or whatever. If I took a look at them, I'm fairly certain that I could simply sort them into, yeah, this was clearly human, this was clearly ape. Um, and I could do that just down the line. So what, um, and what I would say there is that, um, uh, is that since these things don't get close enough to be from a common ancestor, that it really doesn't prove anything evolutionarily. So that's, that's the first thing I would say. Um, what was the second one? Oh, I forget the second one. But do uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? You get it, right? Yeah, I, I still don't see, see the, the objection because what we already have is enough to confirm it. And if it, it's, it's not only the fossils we have, it's also the DNA. Um, it's, it's conclusive evidence that uh, we have, um, we, we share an ancestor with, with uh, the great apes. I would say the DNA would be, um, I would say a very poor argument. Um, I think it's uh, commonly known that we share 98% of our DNA with dolphins. So, I mean, when, when you try to get down to the, uh, the fine details of what separates us from a chimpanzee, that's a very, very, very um, small difference that actually uh, does that. So, I mean, any... Um, why, why should the difference be bigger? I'm sorry? Why should the difference be bigger? Mm, I I don't know how you mean. Um, you say you say it's a very small difference, but uh, what what would you expect if we look at our DNA and we look at the DNA of of the great apes? It's it's extremely similar. We already know. Um, um, what caused uh, it that humans have two chromosomes uh, less than the great apes because chromosome number two fused right and and that lines up with uh, the chromosomes in in the great apes so and I, I what what I don't get I, I've talked to um, um, I I think you're not a young earth creationist. Am I correct? Actually, I am. <laughs> you are. Yeah. Okay. So I I think no, you, you might be you when, might be familiar with. That, I'm sorry. You you might be familiar with Kent Hovind, maybe. No, I'm not. Okay. Kent Hovind was, I think, the the predecessor of of Ken Ham, uh, one of the first uh, big. Uh, promoters of young earth creationism. Uh, I talked to Kent Hovind and I asked him the same question I'm going to ask you. If DNA is not conclusive, uh, we, we can use DNA in, in a court of law to, uh, to prove uh, a paternity and maternity cases and we can go back uh, in DNA to see a lineage. If, if you say that stops at any given point, what would be the mechanism to, to, to stop it? And at what point would that mechanism uh, come into being? No. I'm sorry, I lost the mechanisms. Can you repeat that question one more time? If if there is some sort of mechanism in DNA that you can't go back beyond a certain point, what would that mechanism be? And and at what point would that mechanism uh, uh, come in? 
to stop going back in in the lineage okay i'm trying to noodle through what you mean by mechanism still um well through i'll, I'll try to to rephrase through dna we can uh, not only go to to uh, parents and direct siblings, but we can go um, back in time to see where we came from. So, um, <coughs> where our origin origins uh, uh, were, if they were European, if they were Asian, if they were African, we can go back that far in in our uh, DNA. We can also go sideways, so to, to family members uh, that are still alive. But if, if we can't go back to, uh, let's say, the common ancestor we have with, the, with the, uh, the great apes, where does it stop, you think? Where, where, where is the line that we don't, can, can't go back further to see what our ancestors were well as far as going back to see who our ancestors were this is what I'm saying when I say that um, that if you showed me the um, uh, the lineup of the fossils that we have that we've said okay this is our common ancestor this is uh, one of our ancestors not our common ancestor and then here's us and then here's an ape over here like if if you show me that tree I would line the, uh, up all the fossils and just say, okay, this one was clearly human, this one was clearly ape, and so on down the line. And I would show you exactly where the breaks are. Like, that that's what I mean when I said that. Um, as far as, uh, as far as using uh, DNA to, um, um, I think this is what you were saying about mechanism, but, um, well, let's see if I can get the results right. Um, well, if I could go back for a second, you, uh, we were talking about the chromosomes, and you mentioned how um, the uh, the cr we had two chromosomes fuse, and that's why we have less um, a smaller chromosome yes. count than the good apes. Um, Chromos chromosome number two is 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 a fused chromosome. Right. Right. I mean. I would say that nothing says that the author of life couldn't have written that just the way it is. Nothing says that we have to have uh, evolved from, uh, from the great apes unless you first deny that, um, that God created the first man. Okay. So, so that's well, that. Um and the, I had something else, but I, I, I can't put the words to it right now. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to uh, address in, in succession. Um, you went back to the, the fossil record, and uh, you said, I can point out which one is clearly ape and which one is clearly human. What, yeah. tool, do you, what tool do you use to distinguish that? Um, are, you, are you are you simply going by by the looks of, of, of a skull or or maybe a hip bone or pretty much morphological changes okay because that shows what was written in the DNA uh, everything uh, uh, any uh, living creature has is 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 coming from the DNA, but yeah. what what I would like to know is uh, what tool do you use to distinguish uh, an ape from a human? Hmm. Because uh, let's let's take a, a fossil like like Lucy, for instance. She has uh, distinct ape characteristics, but she also has human characteristics. So, uh, how, how would you classify Lucy? Mm, let's see here. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm looking at the picture of Lucy's fossils now. And for one, we have almost nothing of Lucy in the first place to even judge. Uh, I think I think you might be mistaken. We have over a hundred skeletons of that species. It's not only Lucy. It's not one one find. Lucy was the first, and Lucy was incomplete. But since Lucy has been found, I think there uh, are way over a hundred uh, skeletons, and we have complete skeletons now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm not sure wh what your source is, wh where you're looking at, but that at least that should be mentioned, that it's, it's not only that skeleton. We have confirmation uh, uh, that um, what was assumed when they found Lucy is correct. And I know there are a lot of claims. Um, one of the most popular is Lucy's knee, that it was was found in a completely different location, which is wrong. So there are a lot of uh, misconceptions uh, about Lucy. But... Um, that species is is confirmed and i think it's it's even over 180 complete skeletons but i'm not not quite sure okay well here's here's what i say to that i agree that um humans and chimpanzees let's say are very very close together so how easy would it be when we're missing half the skeleton, as we are with Lucy, um, how easy would it be to mix up what, um, or not, not with the bones, but with um, with our perception of the bones? How easy it would it be to mix up uh, the idea that this is a human being with this is a chimpanzee? I say that it is very, very easy to mix those up. And even trying to go to, um, let's see if I can find a... <laughs> but do you think that people that spend their whole life uh, working on, on this that they would make uh, such simple mistakes because that's something that that's I'm not not, not sure of. Okay. Well. For instance, when, when they found when they found Lucy, the the hip bone was deformed uh, over time, and um, that's where at first there was was some kind of confusion because it looked. Uh, like a hip bone of an ape, except uh, the bones wouldn't fit in the hip bone. So what they did is uh, reconstruct the hip bone so the, the, the leg bones would fit in. And that made it clear that the hip bone was uh, a complete different form. It was, it was a wider hip bone. Uh, <coughs> than they actually found and that was confirmed by the later finds where we have uh, the hip bones that have the shape that um, um, the paleontologists um, thought it should have and that lined up with the reconstruction okay so here's my problem with uh, to reconstruct these things um, I'm going to bring in um, an example and then we can leave it and never return again. I was looking up the, um, uh, the meocids, the uh, common ancestor of, the, uh, of both dogs and cats. And, um, and the big, big problem I have with trying to classify the meocids as a feline canine ancestor is that whenever I looked at the... Uh, um, 
uh, what is it at, at the artist's rendition of uh, of what a muse had looked like, it either looked clearly like a dog or clearly like a cat, depending on where which direction the source was trying to take me. And that mm -hmm. just showed me that uh, the world. But that's 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 not how, that's not how you you work that out because an artist rendition is nice, but that depends on the art. It's not supposed to be the. Yeah, it's not. No, but it's it's it's, it's not supposed it, to be. Um, uh, it isn't. It isn't used. It isn't used in paleontology. Not at all. It's right. just 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 a tool to uh, give people the ability to see how it may have looked like. And, and the problem people do it. People doing it are getting more and more accurate, but we'll never be one hundred percent sure that an artist rendition is even correct so an artist rendition uh, has has nothing to do with with the research and it is not something we would use in research and all of this goes to my point that if you try to reconstruct the skeleton of what this creature may have been or how that hip bone may have actually looked like you're going by your own rendition of what that should be no, no, no. By no. what that evidence actually shows you. No. If you have a hip bone where um, the leg bone doesn't fit in the hip, then that is a clear sign that the hip bone was deformed. So what you have to do now is uh, reconstruct the hip bone so the leg bone fits in. And, and that that, 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 means, that um, and, and, that and this is going to be a little uncharitable, but bear with me. I, I think you'll understand what I'm saying. Is that if you're trying to jam that uh, hip bone intellectually uh, onto the uh, the leg bone, I mean, you're what you're doing is violence to the evidence that you have. Okay, yes. it's like it doesn't. Um, if it does, it's uh, if it doesn't it's go, it, it, force it. If it does, no, no. Uh, if it still doesn't go, use a bigger hammer. Like no, that's not how, that's not not how they did it. It's actually it's it's actually documented. There's a video on uh, at least uh, there are a couple on uh, on YouTube. Ken Ham actually has that in one of his videos, where you can see how they did it. But the fact that they did it now is completely useless because we have found confirmation we have the exact same species with uh, an undamaged hip bone which looks exactly like the one that was reconstructed so the paleontologist had it right we now have hundreds of hip bones that look like the reconstructed one from exactly the same species so that's a clear confirmation that the paleontologist was right in reconstructing that hip bone and that he at least had the knowledge to do it and to come so close to what it actually is that that has been confirmed there's there's no doubt and it's, it's not uh, a violence to a fossil. It's a fossil that, uh, while it was fossilized, the stone bent and that deformed uh, the fossil inside the stone. And that's what, that's what happened. So, Australopithecus, um, that's, the, uh, that's the genus we're talking about? Australopithecus afarensis, that's, that's Lucy. Okay, so I'm trying to find another uh, image here online that I can look at where it's the complete fossil. Not having much luck. Can I ask where you're looking? Oh, I happen to just be on Bing Images. That's, uh, if, if you want to look for things, uh, do you know that there is actually uh, a way 
to weed out uh, all the unscientific stuff and just look for for science papers, such as Google, and uh, is, Google at, Scholar. At, yes, scholar.google.com. And I think I I can reach someone who could maybe help. I'll try. Um, see if he can come up with a link. Okay, so now I'm looking at Google Scholar, and literally the first five articles are just saying that it's a uh, it's a new well-preserved skull, or a new well-preserved um, foot, or a new well-preserved hand, bits and pieces, and I don't see a complete skeleton to look at. Yeah, as I said, I I don't have the link. Uh, at hand and that's because I always go in unprepared and I, I do that for this uh, talk as well as uh, uh, a possible follow-up but um, I could go and and uh, look for the links and put them in the description later if you like because uh, yeah as I said for that species there's extensive evidence it isn't just lucy skeleton and we have we have the complete skeletons okay um yeah i'd like to see those and um uh, and you and you know what <laughs> What I'm going to be very, uh, very wary of is, um, is if you send me something about like a complete hand or a complete reconstruction. I, I, I'm, hmm. I, I'd, I'd even go so far as to say I'm not going to uh, accept that. Like that's going to come to me, and I'm going to have a very strong um, uh, criticism of. Uh, of the reconstructive theory on that. Um, okay, so uh, so yeah, you that's... think you you think that that's the the only reason if if uh, if if it wouldn't be accurate and if it wouldn't be um, uh, honest in any way. That would mean there would be some kind of conspiracy to fool us in 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 letting us think that we have the complete lineage while that's not true. For for a conspiracy, no. No, a conspiracy involves deliberate um, uh, falsification. I mean, I don't think you're trying to be conspiratorial. I think you are starting with a worldview and trying to fit everything that you know with that worldview. The same as me. No, I, uh, worldviews don't come in because worldviews are, are useless. Um, there's only reality and reality is uh, uh, what you can, can prove with, with evidence and that's it. So I could have I could have a worldview uh, that doesn't make what's real not real. I can have a worldview that I can fly and I can have that all day, but I've, if I jump off a tall building, I'm going to be dead because I can't fly. Whatever I think and whatever I I feel or or deny it that has no bearing on what's real or not true and the darwin awards are going to weed out who has the worst ideas from who has the better or survivable ideas 
Um, I mean, uh, to bring in politics, just to prove a point about worldview, um, I saw a uh, um, some YouTubers critique the idea that all civilization is owed to black civilization who went out and uh, colonized everywhere. Did it have any evidence? Did he? Did it have? Um, does it have the slightest um, uh, grounding in reality? No, absolutely not. But people believe it anyway. Um, the uh, the Mormon Church they um, they claim that there was a uh, uh, so, sorry I, I, I came I, and before, before, gave before, before, what I'm sorry before we before we go to the, the Mormon Church I, I I have no clue what you mean by uh, uh, the black civilization uh, seeding everything. What 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 does that mean? Oh, it's it. Um, it's to be perfectly honest, I don't even know. But there's um, uh, some rapper who. Uh, who's propagating it and um but why would you get science from a rapper no i'm just proving a point about worldview they're starting with a worldview and then uh trying to conform everything else to that that's which all I'll, which i already said is useless because worldview doesn't influence reality Right, but it does influence how we perceive the rest of the world. Yes, which but that's becomes just, very, that's very just, important when we um, start trying. No, to, it's it's um, it's it's not important. It's deluding yourself. Correct. If you have a world, if you have a worldview that doesn't conform with the reality, you're you're deluding yourself. Correct. So, uh, and what I'm saying is that this is the trap that people fall into when they try to deny God. Okay, so let's leave the fossils and, and the evidence aside. What evidence do you think there is for a God? Okay, well, first and foremost, Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And I know this because the disciples, 12 of them, well, 12 minus 2 plus 2 more. Anyway, um, because 12 men saw Jesus uh, alive, or at least okay, but this, to see this Jesus is what, alive, this and is then what, they died what, for that testimony. This is what you got from the Bible, correct? Yes. Okay. So, but, but why would the Bible be relevant? Because and it's not just from the Bible; it's also confirmed by the. Um, oh, I'm. I, I was. And this I, is what I'm. I'm sorry. It, it 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 was a simple question. Why why would the Bible be relevant? Not if it's confirmed anywhere else, but why why would the Bible be relevant? Because the Gospels are written as narrative. As as a piece that, of history. That, as a that still that still that still doesn't doesn't get me to to any relevance. Um, the gospels are all anonymous. We we have no clue who wrote them. Um, so you're saying what, that other than uh, Luke could have written Luke. Nobody knows who wrote them. That's that's not that's not a secret. There's there's no. Bible scholar anywhere in the world who has the information. The whole New Testament is all anonymous. Okay. We have we have no signed documents. We have no way to verify who wrote them. Okay. So, but you know but who wrote even them? even even if even if we had uh, those signatures, what would make the Bible? An authority uh, to take as 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 real, because um, 
I'm an atheist. I grew up atheist. To me, the Bible is just a book. What what would make the Bible any more special than any other book? Okay, so um, as far as authorship, for example, we do know exactly who wrote John, and it was John the Apostle. And the reason no, we know no, John, no, we don't. one of the 12, the disciple who Jesus loved, is because within um, the, uh, the text of John, both at the very beginning and at the very end, we have reference to the, uh, the disciple whom Jesus loved. And towards the end, it says exactly who that is. The disciple who Jesus loved is the one who leans back on him during the Lord's Supper and who later identifies himself as John. And and do you, where do where where does this document this signed document where 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 is this where can I find this? Um. <clears throat> so what you can do is look at the um, uh, the manuscript. Looking 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 at the contents of a document says nothing about who wrote it. What what I'm interesting is interested in is who wrote it and you said you knew that the only way you can knew, know that is if you have a signed document and i think that will bring you in world news because no one has that okay well it should have been world news from the very beginning let me pull up but i already said let's let's assume that we know all the authors Okay. Then we have a book with a story. And we also have <clears throat> what what evidence do we have that this story is real? What we don't have is direct evidence that the story is true. We don't have that for any of history. What we have is the records of what people claim. Now, we do have that we do have that for for the rest of history because we have different confirmations from different people from contemporary people. And I would say for the Bible we have that for Tacitus and for uh, uh, we have that confirmation for Tacitus, Suetonius and Pliny the Younger as far as contemporary um, uh, verification goes, and... Um, none, none of those were contemporaries of Jesus. They were as contemporary as it gets. I don't think so. Tacitus was born... Uh, I'll pull up your video because I that's what I initially... Uh, uh, that's what, what I tweeted you about. Right. Uh, in you have a video on on YouTube, and in that you state uh, Tacitus was born in uh, fifty six. Circa fifty. Uh, yeah. Circa fifty six BCE, and he died. AD. Uh, sorry. AD. Yes. You say uh, he was born uh, 56 uh, BC? And uh, B B C BC, sorry. Yes, yeah, so um, CE is it is it now? I'm I'm getting confused. I'll I'll just use uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. No no worries, no worries. In the year 56 and he died in uh, the year 120. Is that correct? Sometime after 120 they say. Okay. Yeah. Um if he was born, let's say he was born in 56, that means he was uh, born 23 years after Jesus died. Correct. So he isn't a contemporary of Jesus in any way. Contemporary means he lived at the same time of Jesus. That's what the word contemporary means. Right, but... Uh so he's so he's not. What I'm showing from Tacitus is only 
that uh, Christians existed in Rome within 30 years of Jesus' death. He is contemporary to that piece of history, the early church. You are, you are in the video citing uh, the book Tacitus wrote, uh, Annales. Is that correct? Uh, no. uh, annals, yes. Yes. Do you know when that was written? Uh, towards the end of his life, um, so close to 120 years AD, uh, 120 AD. 115 is uh, the, the common conception. So five years before he died. Something but like in that. The, in, the vid in the video, you uh, mentioned the great fire of Rome yep. in 64. And that um, Tacitus was writing about it. So you have a contemporary of the fire writing about it as it happened. But that would mean he was only eight years old. Correct. And that's and that was that was my main objection to your video because in your video it, you make it look that he wrote it at the time it occurred. And that's not what happened. He wrote it 50 years later. Well, I'm sorry if I gave you that impression and my viewers that impression. And what, what we have now is if he writes that 50 years later, he writes it with the information that accumulated over those 50 years. That has, that says nothing about, uh, how many Christians there were in 64. I doubt even that he was interested at uh, eight years old about how many Christians there were in Rome. And so um, the main consensus is that um, this account is useless because it's not contemporary. And the main objection for everything is that none of the historians that were writing at the time of Jesus' life wrote about him. Yeah, they didn't think none, it was a while. None of them even uh, uh, wrote about the miracles. None of them wrote about the crucifixion. None of them wrote about the following Jesus had. There's absolutely not Tacitus within 30 years of Jesus dying on the cross. Yes, and you know that in 30 years, a person can become mythicized, right? Because that happens. Sure, it becomes mythicized when it's one person talking about a private revelation they had. But when it's 12 people talking about a public uh, appearance, that they had made to them that's yet, yet yet we don't have 12 people talking about it we have second hand stories written decades after the fact that 12 people talked about it that's something completely different we don't have um, the personal accounts of the people who were there we have two of their personal accounts i would argue four um, but we have no, we don't direct personal accounts, Matthew and John. No, we don't. Of uh, the the New Testament was written uh, before decades after Jesus died. So all you you can uh, uh, at this point have is secondhand information. You have no direct information. And when it comes to the resurrection account, you have, I think, uh, uh, three uh, texts about it, which are completely different again. Not completely different, just written from different perspectives. Going back... No, there, there, are, there are different witnesses. Right. Who found who found Jesus in the tomb? 
for instance. There you have three different accounts. And then there's another well, problem. In every account, when, you go and Jesus, find an empty tomb, but okay. When, when Jesus rose, uh, presumably, uh, a lot of uh, the dead came alive and roamed the streets. I think when uh, something like that would have happened, that the historians would have noticed. And yet, there's no account that ever happened. Okay, it's it's not like... Yes, you're right. The Bible is the only source we have for that. And it's not like all of the uh, dead bones were re-enfleshed and uh, came back to life. We're probably talking about people who had been dead one, two, maybe three days. Maybe a week. I don't still, know. Still, still, you would have... And uh, yes, you're right. I would have to pin oh, that on the Bible, which I can't do. No, I, what I want, wanted to say is, is you still have hundreds of undead people roaming the streets. Not hundreds. Of, Jer what I'm of Jerusalem. It's probably more like 10, maybe 20. Not that many people are dying every day I, in Jerusalem. I, I don't think so. Okay, well. I don't think, I, I don't think, that's not what I got out of the text. Right, and first we need to believe the text to put any... Yes, and, and, and there's, and there's and my problem. And for this, why? I go to the resurrection of Jesus. Okay, but why should we believe the text? For example, go to the passages, we, still, we, still have, we, still, we still have no reason to believe that what the Bible says is actually true. And, and you can go to the, uh, to the middle part of the Bible and take Jesus. What I'm asking is, I pick up the Bible, what's my reason to believe that anything starting from the first page is actually true? Because if, if you say the Bible is the word of God, then we'll have to take a step back and first determine if there is a God and if we uh, can, find, can find a God, can have evidence for a God, we need to define which God it is, if he left his word, and if so, what that word is and where it is. So we can't start with the Bible. Peter. To... Peter. Yes. You are absolutely correct. Okay. And exactly why I'm starting with Tacitus. Okay. Like I said in my video, within Tacitus, we have um, a picture, a narrative that looks very, very close to what we have in the Gospels from the other side of the spectrum of belief. That, there, that there's a large following of people who followed someone named Christ who lived in Judea and after whom there's some mysterious superstitious thing that, uh, that he, Jesus did after he died that causes uh, the, all these people to follow him. Okay, but now, now, you're saying, now, now, now you're saying someone is writing about something that's mentioned in a text that has at that point been around for over 70 years. Right. And you don't think that Tacitus would have is an old man at, at the time of writing this stuff. Okay. Yeah. But it's not like you he don't, made this up. This is a Roman historian. No, Roman but he was Roman aware. Of, he was Sorry? aware of the texts that are now in the Bible. That was the secret. I'm sorry. If if I uh, send you a copy of Harry Potter, mm -hmm. and you and you read it, and seventy years later, you write a book referencing Harry Potter, does that mean that Harry Potter is real? Because that's what, what's happening here. No, but if I um, write 70 years from now that there's a bunch of school kids who think Harry Potter was real, 
Like, this is ridiculous. Now I'm in the place of Tacitus criticizing someone who believes Harry Potter is real. That means that someone in my time now believes that Harry Potter is real. And that's the claim that we uh, would focus on is, is Harry Potter real? I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that there may be people around who think he's real. And now you're so, in the place of Tacitus talking about uh, the Christians. Who yes, but I'm still, I'm still going on known information. So if you say that confirms the text, it does it does confirm the text because he's not. It doesn't confirm. It corroborates. It corroborates. Right, there is a difference. It only yes, it, no. There's no difference. The only difference is that he knew about the text just the way you knew it. You know it now. There's no difference. Okay, but Tacitus. And Suetonius and Pliny the Younger, these guys all knew about the Christians who follow something. Yes. And really a text and I, either. I don't, and I don't object to that because the Christians had the texts they were referencing. That doesn't mean that the texts are true. It doesn't okay. do anything it's for the truth. after the church was started. For two, it, uh, my battery's getting pretty low. I only have about five more minutes. And um, uh, what was my third thing? Oh, and three, I'm not talking about um, like I'm. I'm sorry that we did this. We're trying. We're conflating the Bible with uh, the historical points that I'm trying to make. We we can't. Uh, we shouldn't do that. Okay, for for the sake of um, uh, for the sake of showing the historicity of a resurrected Christ, we shouldn't con uh, overlay the Bible against what we know historically. Why not? We, we should keep that separate until later, when we've after we discussed Tacitus and Tacitus and Pliny the Younger, and seen what they said about the Christians. Then we can go to what. Um, the, but why? Why are they other, relevant? Why What's are that? they? Why are they even relevant? I I still don't see that. Why Tacitus, Suetonius, and uh, Pliny the younger, the younger are relevant? Yes, because they show an explosive growth of the church centered in Judea at the time of Jesus Christ's um, uh, alleged resurrection. Okay, so now let me address this point only. At the moment, we see an explosive growth of uh, Islam. Does that mean they're, they are correct and you are wrong? No. And the difference is, why did they... Ex so, so why does an explosive growth matter? Precisely. So, um, the reason Islam exploded due to a private revelation uh, made... No, you're, you're missing, you're missing, you're missing, you're missing the point. And then militarized it and then took over... Um, you, uh, the you're missing the point. The you're missing world. the point. I'm sorry, you're missing the point. No, I'm. I'm. I'm in the. How many? How many people believe something has no bearing on the truth? That goes for Islam. For it's not a democratic process. A reality is not a democratic process. If enough people believe it, it it suddenly becomes true. Correct, and that's, the not, that's not how it works. Is why did they believe it? If they're believing that someone had a private revelation, that private revelation must be true. Yeah, that's no reason to. And he dropped off. That's a pity. Um, for the people listening, I'll uh, I'll try to uh, to get back in touch. Uh, with Chris, uh, see what happens. I think uh, the problem might be that his battery was completely depleted. So um, I'll see if I can uh, get in touch with him on Twitter.
Ah, uh, sorry for this. Um, I think we had a, a decent conversation, um, but I have no clue what we're going to do now. Um, I don't know if Chris is uh, is listening. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, I would very much like um, for Chris to continue this uh, conversation at any given point, and um, we will do so live, and uh, we'll let you know uh, on Twitter that we're going to do it. Um, I don't think Chris is not answering on Twitter either, so um, I don't think I can get in touch with him again to uh, to continue this. Um, I'm looking at the chat. Um, well, BJ Price, thanks a lot. Uh, he says it needs a part two, and I agree. I think uh, Chris needs... Um, to, to make his point from where we ended here. Um, maybe we, we spent a little bit too much uh, on evolution at the beginning of the talk. So uh, I'm glad to see people calling for, uh, for a second talk. So I will at least invite Chris uh, for that second talk. I would like to thank uh, the people uh, that are still here Carol Ann and, and BJ Price for listening in live. Uh, it's always great to see people making the time to do that. Um, I'll try and contact Chris and uh, see if we can uh, hook up again and um, make a part two of this because I think uh, Chris at least deserves the time to um, make his point and that was cut short here. So. Thanks for listening. Uh, I'll see you soon. Um, don't forget, uh, there's another live call uh, planned today that will be, I think, in about uh, maybe four or five hours. So we'll have to wait for that. I'll uh, I'll tweet it when there's another live call, and I'll tweet it when I'll set up when I've set up a new date with Chris. Thanks for listening and see you next time. Bye-bye.